YouTube! Welcome to another sewing tutorial. This is another Halloween costume themed one. This one cost me anywhere from $30 to $50. I don't have the receipt from the to make sure that my numbers are on. Um, I really do like this outfit, or this coat, and I've assembled it with a Renaissance shirt I already have, a pair of skinny jeans, and some very tall boots. You will see a picture of that later in the video of the whole thing. Um, this is a really great coat that you can accentuate with other things underneath to kind of get a more regal feel or a more of a bandit feel. And pardon the cats, they are playing all around my tripod right now. <laughs> and in, as you go through the video, you will see how difficult they made this entire project for me. I, yeah, you'll see. Um, so I hope you enjoy this project. It is a very long coat, um, even though I hemmed it a little bit more, you are definitely probably going to want to scotch guard the bottoms of it. It is incredibly long. Um, and scotch guard is great for just protecting things in general, especially if it's poor. And I'm short, so if you're taller than me, you're probably fine. Um, all in all, I really did like this project. I'm not a fan of having uh, a fan of having this fan straight up because I'm so small that it just rounds me out. So I kind of folded it so it looks more like Dr. Stranger instead of evil villainous. Um, so I hope you like this video and please like, comment, and subscribe and let me know what I can do to improve videos and please, please watch other videos that the library is doing. Alright, happy holidays. Apparently my mic works too well and it picks up uh, background noise, so I'm going to apologize for that ahead of time. So, and Jervis, you can kind of see his foot is sitting on my table. So we are doing this pattern. This pattern, from what I've heard, is inspired by the what Snow White would wear in Once Upon a Time, the TV series. I've never seen it, so that's what I've heard, though. So... There is a lot of interfaced small bits on this project. So my outside fabric is going to be this gold leafy fabric, and then the inside is going to be black because I am a Hufflepuff. Um, so this is the collar, and the inside and outside of the collar is going to be the outside fabric color. The... Um, cap sleeves that'll go like this on the shoulders is going to have gold on one side, black on the other. Again, this is personal preference. If you wanted black on the inside of the collar, go for it. Um, these interface bits actually have grommets in them, and they go into the back of the bodice to cinch it in the back, which then makes me wonder why we have a waist cincher. <laughs> and then in the front, you've got these little flaps, I want to call them, um, that go in the front. So I have uh, the gold for the outside, black for the inside, just because it makes a pimple on me. Um, and then you get to uh, the last interface bit for the coat itself. So this is actually the front panels of the coat. So one side has a bit of a lip to it, whereas the other side does not because that is where your hook and eye is going to go for your closure for the front of the coat. Speaking of hook and eye, they are the same giant ones that I am using, um, that I used one of them for the bow for the last project. So we've got our side front, and there's duplicates of all of these pieces in black. So side front, side back, center back, then all of the same pieces in black. Then these two huge pieces is the front and the back of the skirt thing on the, uh, it doesn't close in the front, in the back, so I can't be sure if I can call it a skirt but they're skirt as portions because if you look it is specifically not supposed to close i don't know if you can see that 
but in the back it's supposed to lace up. Then we also have a waist cincher. So this one's going to also have boning and grommets and remember because I did not and I'm going to have to pull the pattern pieces out to put your guidelines in so that you have a much easier time throwing the whole thing together. But the outside is going to be black and the inside is going to be green um because that's me um so i'm going to go ahead and start on the waist center because i feel like this would be get done so much faster <laughs> than the coat itself so i'm starting with the waist center and then i'm going to jump into the skirt and then the bodice all right let's get started my usual i don't follow directions <laughs> So they just wanted me to interface these and sew them, and they call this a corset, and I call it a waist cincher because that is not a corset. That is not the width to be a corset. Um, if we want a legit corset video, I'll have to get a pattern for it. So I have these labeled, um, so all the tops, front, side front, side back, back, pin all together in that order, so you'll go one, two, three, four, and then on the other side you'll go one, two, three, four. Okay, other thing that this thing, it said it was a corset, wanted only interfacing, no boning. So I'm going to use the same boning that I had left over from the kimonos waist cincher, that is the sew on uh, boning, and I went ahead and I cut it so that it could go in the same places. So right here, in the center, in the center, and then three in the front. Um, again, I don't know why they call this a waist cincher or why they don't call this a waist injury, and I also don't understand why they aren't using boning. So that is my plan, is to get this pinned, sew the seams, let you see how that looks, and then go ahead and show you what it looks like with the boning. I went ahead and sewed both the top and the bottom. Um, some of my pieces apparently didn't cut right, or they just weren't right on the pattern, which is okay. Um, that's what seam allowance is for. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and sew all the boning to the green lining, and I will show you that as soon as it's done. Boning is on. I'm going to go ahead and match the seams from the front, and unlike how we sewed the kimono, where we sewed the ends and then put bias tape on the top, I'm going to sew the top and bottom and then fold in the ends where the grommets are going to go, because there's also boning on the ends too, and then top speed. Uh, top stitch that and then we're done. Sewn. I've also sewn and clipped one end. I'm gonna go ahead and use this wooden dowel to turn it inside out, turn and sew this, and then put grommets in. Next portion is to sew the um, one bottom and the long side of the tube. After this I'm going to turn it right side out and then I'm going to go ahead and top stitch all the way on three sides because the fourth side is just going to end up going onto the bodice. Interfaced bits. So for the cap sleeves, each side is interfaced. You're going to sew them with right sides towards each other, like I did on this one. Remember to backstitch. And then clip so that it will spread and you're good. Um, same with this, the little flap things. I know there's a word that starts with P and I can't think of it right now. Um, sew with right sides together, leave the top open, remember to backstitch, clip the corners, and then you are going to turn it right side out. Uh, metal chopsticks are your best friend for this project <laughs> in making everything smooth. I'll show you what it looks like when I have flipped them inside out and top stitched them. This is the collar. So the collar is going to be sewn with right sides together. You're going to sew from this corner all the way up, all the way over, 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 down. Clip this corner, clip this corner, turn right side out and top stitch. And I'll show everything when it's done. This is just barely off camera on that side corner. And I swear he's trying to reach so you can get a glimpse of paw. So he's on his window perch. Um, so for this piece, this is the back center back and the side back. You have to sew this curve and then clip it, but in order to do it successfully, um, 
remember to tautly pin each of the ends and then lay this flat and then put the curve on top so that you are feeding it so that all the excess pull of the fabric is on the top. Um, and then the center back seam you just sew. It's at an angle, which is why it's not cut on the fold. Um, just go ahead and sew it and then clip it. The awesome thing about this project is it's all done on the sewing machine and not the serger. This is the side front and then the two front pieces, which are different because one is overlapping the other. So in order to do this portion, I highly recommend, again, pinning very tautly at the top and the bottom of your seam, having this piece lay flat and then this piece on top and all the excess fabric being on top so you can pull on it. Um, and that you're only sewing each portion so that it's the front and the back so that we can put the sleeves in like we did for the uh, spaceship baby dress. So these interface uh, pieces are now top stitched and I also stitched the bottom where they're going to go into the seam of the bodice. So the sleeves are going to attach to um, the shoulder seam. So fold in half, attach to, attach to that center seam pin downward. Um, these are going to go on with the same time as the skirt, so they're going to be on hold for a bit and I hope I don't lose them. And then the scop uh, the collar, I almost called it a scholar, um, the collar is going to be folded in half where the center back seam is and then just followed down. Jarvis, don't you do it. Don't you do it. This is my table. Um, Okay, so these are going, I'm going to finish the bodice, and then I'm going to pin these to the um, right side to right, or, or right side to right side of the um, outside of the bodice, tack that down, and then put on the lining part of the bodice. Alright, so I don't really have a good place to really video this, so I'm just going to try and do it on the table and explain my process. This is my back skirt panel. This is my front skirt panel. How this is going to get layered is it's going to be front, back, back, front to make a half circle. Um, the back to front seams where they meet here are going to be sewn all the way down. The back-to-back -back seam is going to be sewn down enough that you wouldn't see the, like, the pockets of my jeans or whatever pants I wear underneath. Um, and then it will V out from there. So maybe I'll sew like this far down and then it will be open from that point downward. Um, and I'm going to match it to the bodice before I figure out how far down to go. So first things first is to pin all of the tops and sides together, figure out the measurement for that back-to-back -back seam, and then sew down to that point. Remember to backstitch. The front seams do not get sewn. They are left open. The bodice is done, the shoulder is done. Um, so it's a lot like when we did the spaceship dress. So I've already pinned the sleeves with the right sides together on both sides, and then the collar was pinched in half, matched with the center back seam, and then pinned all the way around. So what I'm going to do is stay stitch these on, and then pin on the black um, lining portion. Alright, so with this coat, I keep calling it a coat because I feel like it should be a coat. There is so much skirt fabric on my Like, I feel like there is so much skirt for a coat. Um, like, around the edges of me, on the bottom, like, there, I just get lost in skirt like this is an evening gown. Um, which makes me want to have a bunch of appliques to put on the bottom, but I don't have time to order those, have them come here and get this video out on time. So I'm not doing that as much as I want to. Um, so I've gotten the lining layer, which is black, pinned to the top layer. 
um, it is pinned all the way around the edges. Um, the top, I just matched seams and pinned real quick. And then, like, everything else is pinned really securely together. So, it basically looks like a pair of pants right now, except it's not open on the bottom. But, like, hugely bell-bottom pants. So, I'm gonna run this under the machine. The skirt is so massive. I still think that I should have appliques on the bottom. Anyone who's watched the spaceship dress video, this stuff should really look familiar. Um, so instead of pinning the back, we've pinned the front and the neckline. Um, and it's pinned all the way around. The collar is stays stitched in place, so I just kind of tucked it out of way. Then I've pinned the ah, armhole. So the armhole is pinned... And that is all you're sewing. You are not sewing the sides. Because you're going to do that in the next step. Um, so I'm going to run this uh, through the machine. So you can kind of see what happens. And then you turn it inside out. And then you sew the sides together. Which I'll show. So I actually had to re-sew um, two parts, portions of my scene. Because he kept attacking the skirt while, it was on the, or while I was clipping. So, here's the V, then the skirt goes down, <laughs> around, 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 to here, and then up to the top. You know, just kitty burrito. Just kitty burrito. Do you just want to play? Do you just want to play with Mama's fabric? I played with you. Why are, why are you still hyper? Do I need the laser pointer again? Oh, yeah, you're cute. Anyway, so I clipped the ed- or I clipped the edges- trimmed the corners. <laughs> you better not put holes in that. Don't bite me. Don't just bite. Um, so I clipped the corners. I cl uh, clipped the curves. I'm going to turn this inside out and then I'm going to top stitch it. gets no peace we have to be all over her <laughs> like I have not been able to sew in peace at all today and just if I sit down this is what immediately comes into view I am probably not going to get done today so this is sewn let me have it go through the back and grab the front panel and then pull it through and then what we're going to sew is we're going to match up the armhole sides so match up the armholes pin and or pin and sew like you would for the pinafore or the spaceship dress um and then when you turn it right side out it should just make a straight side. So, next thing on the to-do list. After you've already sewn this seam right here, which connects the bottom of the armhole together, you're going to want to push the seams out and pin them. Why do I top stitch everything? Because it makes it last longer. Because it makes it so that I also don't feel like I have to press because the seams don't match because cotton likes to move. Um... So when it's top stitched, it should look like this because you are top stitching over the sleeve flat so that it lays like this on your shoulder. I also top stitch because it makes consistency a lot easier. So I am not top stitching the neckline yet. Why? Because I need to put the skirt on. And if I top stitch, I'm going to have to guess how far up or down to go or pin it in place ahead of time, which is going to mess with everything. So I'm just not choosing not to do that. So I'm going to go ahead um, and work on the skirt, attach the skirt to the bodice, and then we are going to um, sew them all together and then do the neckline last. So the next portion of this is to pin the skirt and the little flaps to the bodice of the lining. 
So I have this so that this flap is to the side front panel on either side because one side is longer than the other. And then I've pinned the skirt on matching up some of the seams. This kitten, I swear, will not leave me alone today. Down. Um, he has already tried to get his paw in a moving sewing machine. I am having problems. So I have matched up some of the seams. Um, some of the seams, there's a little bit extra in the bodice, which is okay because I can pleat that. As long as it matches from one seam to the other, the center portion not matching is okay because I will just pleat it. Um, because it's the bodice being too big and not the skirt, because I would just pleat the skirt in the same way. So, I'm going to sew this, and then the next portion is going to be folding over the actual outside of the bodice over that seam, pinning it, and then sewing it. I'm going to reprieve why the kitten's trying to catch a fly. Um, now I take that back. He caught it, and he's eating it. So, I have pinned the collar and neckline. Um, and then I have gone around and pinned the bodice. So I've matched up the seams. Where there are pleats on the inside, I made pleats that are towards the center back on the back. Um, because there is going to be a lace-up portion in this, that's why the pleats are going that direction. So that it just follows the natural um, lacing of going towards the center back. Um, I'm going to run this under the machine. Hopefully my kitten does not try to get his paws sewn to my project again, because he has made a new habit of jumping onto my table and trying to bat at the moving needle. <laughs> Okay, so I have already sewn this piece and the neck piece. Um, so this seam is entirely done. Grommets have been done. So this is the waist center, which the pattern incorrectly calls a corset. Um, I probably won't even use this. <laughs> I'm just being honest. It is flimsy. It does nothing for the security of the outfit. Um, it's basically a belt, which I feel like this pattern really doesn't need. Um, so for the back lacing that's already built into this coat, um, these pieces have already had the grommets put in, so I'm matching this up to the bottom and then putting it straight vertically up. The reason why I'm putting this on last is because of the fact that I want it to go through both layers of the fabric so when it pulls, it pulls evenly and that your lining isn't bunching up. So that is going to be my next step, is just sewing, pinning and sewing these through the next two layers. Then I'm going to be finagling how to put these hook and eyes on in a way that I like. Because I don't have any trim for this fabric at the moment to cover threads, so I'm wondering whether or not I want these to be visible. Last fi uh, final touches. Lace in the grommets. Perfect. Working great. Eyes hidden by a trim, absolutely great. Um, the only thing I don't like is how wonky it looks when put with the hooks. So it makes a clear indent on this side, but also hooks are attached and hidden by the trim. So all in all, I like this project. Um, is it my go-to? Maybe when I can figure out a different clasp situation in the front. Other than that, I really wish the school skirt was a lot less full. So you could actually see that V in the back do its job. Sorry, cats are playing. Um, and so, all in all, I like this project. Will I make it again? Maybe. Um, but overall, it was a great project. Um, waist center will be distinctly missing from pictures of me wearing this because one, I don't like it. There's already a lace up back that makes this cinch well to the body. And two, it calls itself a corset and it's not a corset. No. <laughs> anyway, this, that's my final thoughts on this project.
If you like this video and would like to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe. Ranger! <gasps> There's Ranger and Jervis! <laughs> oh, are we playing now? Maybe? Jervis, he looks like he wants to play with you. Maybe. Y'all know I'm recording. Alright. I hope everyone has a fantastic fall.